welcome back to OmniFit TV. This is your host Omar speaking and I just finished watching the Chelsea Leicester game. I was following the Man City Brighton game in tandem. Uh obviously it ended a little earlier. That Graham Potter and Pep Guardiola incident on the touchline after it ended. That was weird. I tried asking around to figure out what that was about, but uh, apparently the uh City fan account that I asked <laughs> uh turned the TV off as soon as the final whistle uh aired. As soon as it sounded, basically. I'm not really surprised. As, although I should be. Here's the thing. I'm looking at these two teams, the Chelsea and City. And in my humble opinion, and I think many people would agree with me on this. If anyone had told you, you the viewer watching this right now, that two teams who spent their entire season without a proper number nine, would make it to this season's UEFA Champions League final. I don't think anyone would have believed you. I mean, sure. City, believable, despite the fact that they have no number nine. Chelsea, eh. That was a very stressful game. That Chelsea-Leicester game was one of the most stressful games I remember watching in a long time, also because of the fan attendance. It was good to have fans in attendance at Stamford Bridge. It was good to hear them chanting, just singing along, being happy, you know, connecting. It was good to see fans at Old Trafford earlier today as well. That Cavani goal just had to have people in the stands. And watching Cavani celebrate with the United Faithful for the first time at Old Trafford was just... It was just it's, it's just good. It's good to see fans in attendance again. It's a joyous scene. And it proves my point. You know, there was something I said in a video I did a while ago, that it's not great if some if no one's there to see it. And to be fairly honest, we've seen some brilliant moments in football throughout the past season, season and a half. And well, I just basically wanted to uh, look back, apart from talking about Chelsea and City, but I just want to digress for a minute. At this exact point last year, I put a team together and we started Omnifoot. I saw a Instagram story that I had uploaded yesterday. Uh, yesterday last year. Of the Bundesliga starting up again. And it was a Dortmund game. Can't remember who Dortmund were playing. But I can remember how happy I was. How happy we were as a team. Because we started covering news and just posting and making content all while everything was just locked down while football was at a halt where everything stopped and we were debating whether we should have even begun at that point in time or if we should have waited until the season began and we started earlier than that we started in March of last year late March and when I saw that story I had posted as a memory on my Instagram feed, I was just taken aback. <laughs> it felt surreal to think that in a year we've made such progress. We have 15,000, close to 15,000 followers on Facebook where all of our Arabic content is. 28 subscribers on our Arabic YouTube channel, which has been inactive for a bit. 66 subscribers on this channel. Thank you to each and every one of you. It's an important number. And currently closing in on the 900 mark on Instagram. I'm proud of the work that's been put into this. I'm proud of the mileage that's been made. I'm proud of the progress that we have made. You know, not just me. The people behind the scenes that you guys don't see on camera. I'm grateful, you know. So with that, <clears throat> I'll go back to the topic. Excuse me for going on a tangent. I'm not really going to wax lyrical. <laughs> but I am genuinely in disbelief at how unpredictable both teams have been. Or rather, predictably unpredictable. I mean, you wouldn't assume... That City would go to the Amex and lose 3-2 after being up by two goals to nothing. 
or that Chelsea would lose the FA Cup final despite having the highest number of chances throughout the game and better possession, which just, pro- which just proves that possession without action is just futile and useless. And then after that, go on to beat Leicester at Stamford Bridge in one of the most tense games I've watched as a fan. It had a very Chelsea Leeds aura to it because of the animosity. And that fight near the end of the game was also just... You could tell their blood was boiling. This is going to be a very interesting week. These next two weeks are going to be very interesting. Kante came off early on early on in, this, in the first half due to a minor injury, as far as we know so far. Kovacic did well when he came on. Mount nearly got injured. That was scary. You could tell Tuchel was irate on the touchline because of the penalty that wasn't awarded. And and then you have City. You know, like I can talk about Chelsea's improvements, but you just cannot overlook Man City. Ruben Diaz has single handedly addressed their backline problem. They went from conceding around 35 or 36 goals last season to a current 26 or 27. Please look that up and just correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But that was the margin that I had seen earlier today because of his presence. And despite not having a proper striker, someone who's been consistently coming up with the goals throughout this season, their defenses really kept them going. And I'm sorry, but as I said in the last video, this just proves the point that, as they say, strikers may win you games, but defense wins you titles. Solid defenses win you titles. And in comparison, I mean, City are much more fluid in regards to how they play and how they set up in comparison to Chelsea. Despite how organized Chelsea are, their movement from the back line to the midfield and how they move the ball overall throughout the three stages on the pitch, it falters completely from midfield to attack. And it's something that genuinely needs addressing. I was talking to the guys on the WhatsApp group earlier earlier during the game, and I was just wondering what Tuchel does with Timo Werner in training. What does this man do with this striker in training? Werner has been caught offside 41 times this season in the league alone. The boy was practically born offside, as Sir Alex once said about Inzaghi. That is the quote that came to mind during the FA Cup final. And throughout games past, before that. I don't necessarily know what Werner's problem is. He's, he works hard. He's a smart player. He's not that physically domineering yet. He's, he doesn't have that physical presence just yet. But at the same time, he makes these silly mistakes. His movement is great. He pulls people out of position at the back. He knows how to, how to properly move with the ball. He knows how to move without it. He causes a lot of, of anxiety to players that he comes up against. But he falters at the very last hurdle. And it's, for the most part, being caught offside this many times in a single season. This just means that he has issues with his positioning. He has issues with two things. His positioning and his ability to finish. He's handed, he's given us a good couple of assists. Showed up in very important games in his own way. We didn't necessarily sign him to come good with assists. And I say we because I am a Chelsea fan and I will admit that bias, but I'm trying to analyze this as objectively as humanly possible. His case is just odd. I mean, his numbers are good, but when you look at the chances that he has missed, how many he's missed 
throughout the throughout the course of this entire season thus far. It's just weird. It's odd. I don't get it. I mean, it's quite obvious that he has issues with his confidence, because he, you can tell that he has his head held low a little too often. But at the same time, whenever he gets that push, whenever he manages to score or really provide a solid assist, it's like he's back in there again, and he starts working again. His work rate rises, he moves a lot faster, he makes better decisions, and then he just makes the same mistake again and finds himself in the same loop. And I don't necessarily understand that. You can't be doing that ahead of a Champions League final. Like, maybe our errors are glaring in comparison to City's. Because City has have already won the League Cup and the League heading into a Champions League final. Their, their only issue is the person up front. Not the way they move their not the way they move the ball to get to that person up front. But the person up front in of himself. That question mark up front. That's their only issue. And they've managed to handle it or adapt to it in as in as good a manner as possible. I mean what more can I say? They've already won the league. They won the league without a striker. Bring me like provide me with data or proof, references, whatever ha- what have you. And just tell me if a team has done that before. I genuinely like to know. When was the last time a European team won a league cup won the league won their league, whichever league they were in, without a number nine? I don't necessarily know if that's happened before. And it's just, it's hilarious. I don't know what these two teams are going to do against each other in the final. I don't necessarily know what to predict. I mean, could City falter as they have before in the Champions League? Could Chelsea bottle it just like they did in 08? You just can't tell. There are certain flaws to both teams that show up in different circumstances. And this final is not going to provide any room for error whatsoever. And speaking of Man City, apart from the whole error thing, Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed has just made a wonderful gesture earlier today, saying that every single Man City fan who supported the team throughout the years should have the right to travel and go see their team play in the Champions League final. And he will handle all the expenses to every City fan going to watch the final in, in Porto. And yes, in case you don't know, the Champions League final has been moved to Porto. For reasons that I am not aware of. And either way, I doubt they're good reasons, to be honest. I think it's more I think it was more of a business move. But just looking at Sheikh Mansour, it's like he's such a good owner. Seriously. And I made that clear in my Leicester video. He has done such a wonderful job at Man City. We can talk about the industrialization of the sport all we want. But if you have people who have the money and who are spending it in the right places and who are really building your club, rebranding it, redefining it and its place in its league, in its continent, in the world, there's a dynasty here. And looking at Chelsea and City overall throughout the last decade, they've been the two teams in contention for the Premier League for the most of that decade. Their rivalry just sprung up in this modern sense. And mind you, there isn't that much animosity between the fan bases. I mean, they just don't care about each other. They just... I remember when when City won the league. Whenever they would, we just didn't care. Like, they won the league. Okay, they're not our rivals, per se. This quote-unquote rivalry just grew out of cities I'm not going to say dominance because it started out before that 
like not as soon as Sheikh Mansour bought the club, but slowly but surely as they rose up the ranks, they started becoming a thorn in their neighbor's side. And then we got in the way. And it became more of a, oh, okay, we're facing Man City now. And they mirror us in a lot of ways, but we just don't care about each other. And it's weird. And I think this final could genuinely be the catalyst for a rivalry that has not yet been experienced in English football. Whatever the result. It's going to be a very interesting final. And in my humble opinion, a case study should be done about how these two clubs have reached the Champions League final, their ownerships, how they mirror each other. It's surreal to think that, you know, two clubs, one of which was in debt and was close to disappearing, Chelsea, back in 2003, rising up the ranks thanks to Roman Abramovich. And then you have City, who had absolutely nothing on their neighbors, were bought out by Sheikh Mansour, and then year after year after year, they just kept growing as an institution and as a club. And I don't necessarily think people saw this coming. I don't necessarily think people saw Man City becoming this side of world beaters. The goal initially when they signed Guardiola was to reach the Champions League final. And they have. And it's quite the achievement. Pep has struggled year after year. Pep has bottled it year after year with City no matter how much the man has spent he just hasn't gone over the line and I'm quite certain that the fact that they got over the line is solely based on how they've mended their defensive issues because despite the fact that they had a much better forward line throughout the past couple of seasons a much more balanced side. They don't have that now. And this city side could still get better. It could still get stronger. They don't have that now, but they have a defense that's better than any they've had for a couple of years now, arguably. And that booked their ticket to the final. It seems as though Pep has finally found the key. And I was thinking earlier about how well Tuchel has done for Chelsea, how well he's done managing the club, and in such a short time as well. You could argue the case that Tuchel is proof that any manager should come in at such a situation or at the beginning of whatever circumstance they came in and manage to turn things around for their club, not necessarily to this level, but to something similar depending on that club's stature and their standards. And currently, I buy that argument. It's going to be very difficult to predict what's going to happen on May the 29th. Hopefully Kante will be back from injury. Hopefully any players that are needed by either manager will be back from injury because to be fair... I do not want to watch either side miss a star man in that game. This is the biggest club final in world football. The biggest club competition in world football. And every player who's played a huge part in either team going this far should be on that pitch in the Stadio Dragao on the 29th of May. And that wraps it up for today's video. Uh... Hopefully the uh, visuals won't give me a problem as they did last time. I had a green screen and lighting issue. I'd like to thank everyone for subscribing. Uh, apologies for going on that tangent earlier on in the video. I'm just genuinely grateful for where we are now with this. If you don't follow us on 
any of our social media accounts or on one and not the other. The links are in the description below. Uh, I just want to let you all know that I will be starting a Euro 2021 preview series very soon. As soon as this season ends. And I hope you all have a good week. Thank you all for watching. I will see you next time the whistle blows. Cheers, everyone.